stay with COVID and talk about some new research on vaccines. Uh, this relates to a report in the Science magazine this week. It says it's possible that mixing different COVID vaccines could actually be more effective and boost the immune response. Let's talk now to Professor Shabir Mahdi, vaccinologist, and director of vaccines and infectious diseases at the Analytical Research Unit at Wits University. Professor, thank you so much for your time. So this article is in the Science magazine. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, tell us a little bit more um, about what this could mean, because it sounds like it was born of necessity that people had an AstraZeneca shot first, and then they had to have a Pfizer shot for whatever a reason uh, and it seems to boost uh, their immune system better than if you stuck with just one type. Tell us more. Yeah, correct. So uh, what this study basically uh, did is that they uh, vaccinated individuals with AstraZeneca vaccine and followed it up with a Pfizer vaccine and then they had another arm where individuals received two doses of the Pfizer vaccine. And what they were able to show is that those individuals that received this combination of vaccine AstraZeneca followed by the Pfizer they actually mounted antibody responses that were actually slightly better than those individuals that received two doses of the Pfizer vaccine, which is something that scientists have been uh, thinking about for the past few months as more of different sorts of technologies have been used for vaccines. But what was also important from the study is that they were able to show that with that type of immune response that was being mounted, you probably would overcome some of the resistance. Uh, that the beta variant, the variant that dominates in South Africa, has to the AstraZeneca vaccine because the magnitude of the antibody responses is so much more superior. So it's really important, uh, important finding. And to some extent, I do believe that uh, the studies are underway, but you probably could already extrapolate the experience for the AstraZeneca vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine to possibly uh, priming with a Johnson & Johnson vaccine and then following up with a Pfizer vaccine to boost the immune response. I think what we currently experience for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is that it probably does a really good job in protecting against severe disease. But as you indicated, the MEC as an example is an individual that still got infected after being vaccinated. And this is not an infrequent occurrence amongst healthcare workers. So if we're really wanting to boost protection against the full, severity, full spectrum of severity of disease, including mild infection, we might well be faced with a situation where we need to actually decide to actually boost the, for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine with the Pfizer vaccine, even amongst healthcare workers. Uh, that's really interesting. And, um, you know, in this particular study, I think they mixed uh, Pfizer and AstraZeneca. Now, my understanding, and this is where uh, I don't know the details, but that uh, is two different types. One is an mRNA, another is a vector vaccine. But is the essential result that they're covering more angles in terms of curtailing this virus? Uh, correct. So they, they're producing probably a different repertoire of immune responses. So the vector-based vaccines are really good in inducing what we call T-cell responses. Uh, the messenger RNA vaccines perhaps a bit less so. But uh, the main uh, measure that they looked at in the study was the ability to produce what we call neutralizing antibodies. And like I said, the combination of these two vaccines performs slightly better than two doses of the Pfizer vaccine. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is also a vector-based vaccine, very similar to the AstraZeneca vaccine. And that's the reason why I say that it is possible that we would get a very similar sort of experience in terms of immune responses if we combine the Johnson & Johnson to the, with the Pfizer vaccine. So I have to ask about AstraZeneca. Of course, you were the project lead on the research done here. We imported the AstraZeneca vaccines. Then the information came out uh, that it wasn't really effective at all in dealing with the variant, the beta variant here. So we, we shipped the AstraZeneca off. I mean, I hate to ask this, but does this new research suggest that we could have, and of course hindsight is 2020 vision, but we could have actually started vaccinating with AstraZeneca and then bombed in with, say, Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer to boost it? Uh yeah, Sally, so it wouldn't be hindsight because that's what the World Health Organization had recommended at a time when the study results came out where we showed it didn't protect against mild and moderate infection, which didn't exclude that it might still protect against severe disease. And in fact, uh, over time, there's even been other data points which shows, especially in populations such as South Africa, where there's been a high force of past infection, a single dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine would actually overcome some of that antibody resistance of the beta variant uh, that's induced by the vaccine. 
uh, a complete miscalculation on the part of South Africa not to have started using the vaccine. In fact, much of the teething problems we're currently experiencing with the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccines, we would have probably been able to deal with that. Yet we started rolling out the AstraZeneca vaccine, in addition to which we probably would have saved a few hundreds lives. Yet we started with the AstraZeneca vaccine and complied with the WHO recommendation on the use of that vaccine, even in a country such as South Africa, where the beta variant was dominating. So why didn't we do that? Well, I think that's a question that needs to be posed to the Ministerial Advisory Committee and the Department of Health, who made the decision eventually, despite WHO recommending otherwise. So, let's talk about AstraZeneca, because I know there's ongoing research. Are you continuing to track uh, the people who are involved in the study here in South Africa? Because what I want to know uh, is, is how much immunity they've managed to have against any beta variant that they might have since picked up. Or are you no longer tracking them? Now, so, in fact, what we're doing with AstraZeneca vaccine trial participants is we're doing what we call a switchover. Uh, individuals that received two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine previously have been given an additional dose, and those individuals that received a placebo are now being given two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. And in fact, almost, almost all of our participants in a placebo group have actually agreed to wanting to receive the two doses of the vaccine. Uh, I don't expect the AstraZeneca vaccine to protect against mild and moderate uh, infection due to the beta variant. That is not going to happen. Uh, but uh, in South Africa, as well as in other countries where there's limited supply of the vaccine, it's not about protecting against mild infection any longer. It's about saving lives. It's about protecting against severe disease. And probably all of the COVID vaccines that are currently available even though they, were de they weren't designed specifically for the beta variant, would have high levels of effectiveness against severe disease due to the beta variant. Mm. I remember at the time that small study said it's not good at preventing a mild case against sort of young adults. Um, but we didn't know what it did for people uh, in terms of the beta variant and death and dying. The presumption, I think, was that if it can't even prevent a mild case, it's not going to prevent a death. Are you saying that was a miscalculation? Oh, and I think all of the other studies clearly show. In fact, it's not just unique to COVID-19. For any vaccine that I've worked on for the past 25 years, uh, vaccines generally work much better in protecting against severe disease rather than a mild infection. It's much more difficult for a vaccine to prevent an upper respiratory tract infection, which is a mild infection, than to prevent severe disease that's taking place in the lungs and in the blood. Uh, that is a history of vaccines. They usually perform much better against severe mm. disease. And the immune factors that probably contribute to that differ. So you probably require antibodies to protect against mild infection, whereas you require another arm of the immune system, which is less affected with these beta variants, to protect against severe disease. So going forward, we're at the moment we have Pfizer coming in, Johnson & Johnson is on hold. Are you saying if we can get our hands on anything, AstraZeneca, whatever it is, ship it in, start administering it, and top up with the other vaccines? Uh, we're not spoiled for choice in terms of what vaccines are going to become available to us anytime soon. Yes, we can continue waiting for the additional 20 to 25 million doses of Pfizer vaccine to come, uh, but that will probably come when we're experiencing a fourth wave. Uh, right now, if we're wanting to save lives, it's about vaccinating people as quickly as possible. So we, it needs to be all that's on board, uh, in term, all ends on board in terms of ensuring that we can access whatever vaccine we can in the shortest period of time. Uh, but the vaccine, at the same time, those vaccines should have had some level of interrogation by the WHO and a recommendation by the WHO, by the advisory group of WHO, that these vaccines are suited for use uh, in settings. All right, so whatever vaccines are available, provided they've got the nod uh, from the international bodies, we should be bringing them in. I have to ask you a final question as a, as a member of this university. Do you stand with your health sciences colleagues and, of course, the Premier, calling for Charlotte Matlake Hospital to be declared a local disaster? And how concerned are you about the fact that this massive hospital is not working at the moment? It is closed as we are uh, heading into the worst of the third wave. Yeah, extremely concerned at multiple levels. In addition to the issue of patient care and the limited uh, additional capacity that exists to actually absorb those patients that would otherwise have been hospitalized at uh, this particular hospital, it's also impacting on the training of undergraduates as well as postgraduates. So it's got multiple repercussions. And we absolutely support the Premier that this needs to be declared as a disaster 
and that the province needs to have greater control and say in terms of the reopening of the facility, uh, provided that obviously the necessary uh, that it is compliant uh, from a safety perspective as well as from a fire hazard perspective. So that needs to take place, but it's absolutely essential that something be done urgently because the healthcare system in Gauteng is under severe pressure at the moment uh, and it's not going to get any better for the next uh, four to six weeks. All right, thank you so much uh, for your time this evening. That was Professor Shabir Mahdi. He's a vaccinologist. He's also director of vaccines and infectious diseases at the Analytical Research Unit at Wits University, making some really strong calls there, not only supporting uh, that a local uh, state of disaster declared at Charlotte Macleke, but also saying we got it completely wrong not to start with the AstraZeneca vaccine. And new research coming out is proving that you can have multiple different doses of COVID-19 vaccines it gives you better protection. And he says that the government made a miscalculation in not following the WHO advice at the time. That's